What's up gamers, it's time for the sandbox news. This week, we have updates to dedicated servers, add-ons and the add-on manager, new systems for creating custom maps for other people's games, and a few other minor updates. There are a few minor changes to Construct. There's a new yellow ladder here, so as you would expect, you can go up it, and some markings and signs in the parking garage. There's also some new traffic cone props and this big tunnel support thing. It looks like they're doing maintenance on the pipe here, and they need to hold up the bridge. So they put in this big obstacle course. I believe this is for professional tag. So you would crawl around here and climb on all these metal bars to avoid getting tagged or to tag the opponent. That's so interesting, wow. There's a unique feature about this blue door here that I wanna point out. You can't actually fit through it. So we can see the player has an access aligned bounding box and it's too big to fit through this door because the door's at an angle. It's a very interesting feature. There are new updates to dedicated servers. If we go into the games list here, under sandbox mode, you can see there's dedicated servers. Previously, you had to manually connect to a server through the developer console. Now, currently they're all mixed in with the peer-to-peer -peer lobbies. There's no way to tell them apart. You just have to kind of guess. I can assume this Xbox and this Chino are dedicated servers because they have zero players in it. Really, that's the only way of knowing right now. This was just added and is still an early work in progress. It's actually very likely that this whole menu will be reworked at some point. They're using the game DM98 as a test for dedicated servers. So here we can see DM98 UK. This is a dedicated server that Facebook is using to test everything and make sure it works. It's using a new map, Datacore. So this is a recreation of the Half-Life 1 Deathmatch map by the same name. As you can see, it's still a very early blackout, so everything is just a gray square. This DM98 game has also received some updates. So we can see there's a crowbar. DM98 is inspired by Half-Life 1 Deathmatch, so I would assume it has all the Half-Life 1 weapons. We can see here's a crowbar. There's no view model for it. This is a pistol that we've had before. This is a different pistol. Here's a shotgun, uh, SMG, uh, crossbow, and there's a new grenade and tripwire mine. So we can see this beautiful grenade. Does it explode? Oh, it does. That's so cool. Wow. And there's a tripwire mine. So I can place it on the wall and we can see, I bet it probably explodes when I touch it. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that functionality hasn't been added yet. It's still a work in progress. There's also these Half-Life 1 HEV chargers. So I press E and it heals me. As you can see, I'm being healed and it's being drained. Very cool. Now keep in mind, this is on a dedicated server and it's being used to test new dedicated server functionality. So this is very exciting and I'm very excited to see what comes of this. The add-on manager has also been updated. Previously, if you created the game, you'd see a tab here to change the settings of the game. You could change things like the description and the player count. All of their settings have been moved to the new add-on manager. So here we can see, this is actually my metro map. So I'll go to back rooms, and here I can change the minimum and maximum players, the networking type, the map selection, and the leaderboard types. I really like that they were all moved over here. Previously, there were three different spots to change settings for your add-ons. In-game, in the add-on manager, and on the developer website. I think they might be phasing out the developer website too. I think the only thing that you can do here is change the description and the pictures. You don't even upload from this website anymore. Everything is done through the add-on manager. You just click upload to Sandworks and you're done. I'm glad everything is being condensed into one spot. It didn't make sense to have so many different places to change your settings. Also, there's a new map selection type. So unrestricted, hidden, and this list only were the previous three settings, but now we can do any map with support. So that's really good for things like TTT, uh, racing game, or really most games. So if I go into a map that I have, I'll open up Metro. I can add supported games here. Currently, there's no easy way to find the organization and game. You have to type it in manually. For example, if I wanted my Metro map, to work on the back rooms game. I would have to type gvar.backrooms because that's my organization and game identifier. 
This wouldn't actually work here because the backrooms is procedurally generated, so it doesn't support custom maps. This also resets all the map restrictions that we had previously. So if your game has restricted maps, you have to update them and re-add them through this new menu. We can see here the real Terry strategy game, the RTS, has not received this update yet, so by default it's trying to make me play the RTS game on Construct, which wouldn't work. The entity tool in Hammer is getting some updates, so currently if I want to put down an entity from a specific game, I would have to go through and manually install the game for it to show up in the editor. So for example, if I wanted to include support for Fort Wars in my Metro map here, I would have to try to find the GitHub page or the FGD download for that specific game and then manually install it. If I don't do that, I won't be able to see the entities. So this is a spawn room trigger for Fort Wars, but it just shows up as an error. Same with all these spawn points. These are the unique spawn point entities for Fort Wars, but they just show up as obsolete because they don't have it manually installed. This entity tool here is being completely reworked. So in the future, we'll just be able to search for the game that we want to make the map for, and then it will automatically download and install the required files, so you can place all the entities in your map. In this video from the developer, we can see he downloads the entities from Minigolf, and then he's able to place all the different holes and camera positions in his map. So this is great, this will save a ton of time and make mapping for different games so much quicker and easier. Also, FGD files are being completely removed. Now, FGDs or Forge Game Data files are a super old file system that Valve has been using since at least 1996. So this is an FGD from one of my sandbox games. And this is an FGD containing a bunch of extra entities that I made for Gary's mod. It's the same format and it's pretty limiting for something like Sandbox. Now instead of getting all the entity information from a text file, the entities in Hammer will come directly from your C Sharp code. That will open up a ton of possibilities for entities in Hammer. We'll be able to do things like create custom helpers for Hammer. As you can see, this door helper is pretty advanced and it shows me where my door is going to open and how it's going to rotate, but this has been hard coded into the engine. We can't really use this for anything other than a door, but in the future we'll be able to make our own helpers to do anything we want. This will make mapping so much easier. There are a few other minor changes. We have a new haircut. As we can see here, this one is a bob cut. And there are a few new skins for the ball in mini golf. We can see them here in the screenshot from the developers. They're different colored balls with faces on them. Well, that's it. That's all the sandbox news. Like, comment, subscribe.